Hey Living Rock family, whether this is your first time watching one of our sermons or you've been a part of Living Rock for many, many years, we are so glad that you clicked on our video today. We would love to hear from you after the sermon is over. Um, if God spoke to you through the message and laid something on your heart, share it with us. Send us an email or call us on the phone. We would love to know what God is doing through Living Rock Church for you. We'd also love the chance to connect with you. So like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and check out our website for all of the events and things that we have going on in the church. You can also get connected with all of our ministries or with Pastor Ryan. There's so much we have to offer, and we can't wait to share it with you. I also wanted to let you know on the way to my, my dad's, actually, you know, the Lord has perfect timing for everything. I had intended to go a little bit early, I had a little car trouble, so my car had to be in the shop for a couple of days, which delayed me being able to go, but I got there right on time <laughs> to be there when I was needed the most and uh, would not have been there, actually, um, had that little delay happened. Sometimes you just don't know. We think sometimes delays are interruptions in our life and problematic, and in reality, God is simply orchestrating and editing and setting things up. Um, I do want to thank the church. It was very kind of you to send a basket um, of fruit to my dad. He enjoyed receiving that. And, um, and I'm looking forward to sharing some with you in a few weeks on the family. I'm going to be doing a new series that I'm, I'm just going to call Family Matters for lack of a better... <laughs> title at this point, but we're going to talk about marriage, about family, about raising kids, and about caring for our parents, and uh, something that uh, I'm just now getting a little bit of experience with. And so open your Bible to Daniel chapter 6. While you're turning to Daniel chapter 6, <clears throat> I want to read you one proverb this morning. This proverb will kind of serve as almost like a banner over our text today, and you'll see why. Proverbs 16, 7 says, When a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. Daniel chapter 6, It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 princes, which should be over the whole kingdom, and over these princes, presidents, of whom Daniel was first, that the princes might give accounts unto them, and the king should have no damage. Then this Daniel is preferred above the presidents and princes because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Then the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could find no occasion or fault. For as much as he was faithful, and neither was there any error or fault found in him, and then said these men, we shall not find occasion against this Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. And then these presidents and princes assembled together to the king and said thus unto him, King Darius, live forever. All the presidents of the kingdom, governors, princes, counselors, captains, have consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree that whoever shall ask a petition of any god or man for 30 days, save of thee, O king, he shall be cast into the den of lions. Now, O king, establish the decree, sign the writing, that it be not changed according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which alters not. Wherefore, King Darius signed the writing and decree. And now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house, threw open the windows of his chamber toward Jerusalem, kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed, and gave thanks before his God as he had done previously. Now, the book of Daniel has not been the book that I expected it to be. I think we've all, we've heard the term, you know, you're in the lion's den. <laughs> but I'll tell you something, this is no children's story. Like Joseph, Daniel is a holy man which is being held against his will in a hostile foreign land, just as Joseph was in Genesis. Joseph, as Daniel, kept the faith. He honors God. He rises to power in a heathen, pagan land. 
because he's able to interpret dreams. He has favor, Daniel does, with all the rulers of Babylon, from Nebuchadnezzar to Darius. But like Joseph, Daniel is about how people of faith are supposed to survive, even prosper. Yes, I mean even prosper. Even though you're in an alien land and under an empire spirit. How many know God wants us to prosper? Even in adversity. It's about how, this book is also about how Jews maintain their identity when society wants to erase it. And we see some of this tension actually taking place today, even in Jerusalem. If you've followed the world news at all, this question that's facing Israel right now is a question about identity. It's also how people, in Daniel now, it's also about how people find faith by coming together in small groups, sticking together, hanging out together, supporting each other. But I want to say right off the bat that your lion's den or the lion's den is not your situation. And that's what we think. The lion's den is my, search, my situation. The adversity that I'm facing. The hostility that I'm facing. The extreme disadvantage that I'm at right now. That that's what it means to be in the lion's den. That may be what the expression the lion's den means. But that's not what the lion's den is in Daniel. I mean, Jesus said, in the world, you're going to have trials and tribulations. You're going to have testings. Things are not always going to go your way. Is that the lion's den? It's not. Those are trials. They're tests. The lion's den was not Daniel's trial. The lion's den was the result of how Daniel handled his trial. I want to say that again. The lion's den was not Daniel's trial. The lion's den resulted because of how Daniel handled his trial. Very important that we understand this. Because he had a decision. Do I, do I obey God? Do I break my routine? Do I stop my commitment? But we know from reading the text that Daniel's decision was not altered by the new circumstances. The new situation he was in did not change anything about his commitment, did not alter his identity as a Jew who prayed toward Jerusalem. Now, Daniel's 80 years old now. I mean, this guy, we've been following him since he was like a teenager, 17 years old. He had a trial in his 30s, another one in his 50s, and now he's 80 years old. Can I just say to you a little word of comfort this morning? You never outgrow trials, tribulations, and the price of the lion's den. I know you were hoping, you were hoping that once you got to a certain age that you think that, okay, it won't be tough anymore. It won't be hard to make decisions anymore. Life will get easier as I get older. It's just wishful thinking. He's been in Babylon now for over 60 years. And if you remember in the last message, it's the Persians are now are in control. Cyrus had killed Belshazzar. And this is like the second medal. Remember Nebuchadnezzar had that uh, dream where he saw the big statue, the head of gold, and the breast of silver. This is that second kingdom now that's in charge. And it's a world power. And Daniel, however, is not a man-centered leader, even though he's been put in charge of, of has great responsibility. He's one of these presidents. He's not a man pleaser. Daniel is a God pleaser. Ephesians 6, verse 6 says, not to do things with eye service as men pleasers, but as bond servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. Jesus 
spoke about the Pharisees being kind of men pleasers. When it came to prayer, they liked to pray long, illustrious prayers. They liked to wear certain robes and attire. They'd make the fringes on their, on their robes, on their ephod very long, you know, so people would notice that they, you know, some people are all about the show. But God's about the stuff. Do you have the stuff? Or do you have the show? And we live in a world today that is easy to put on a show. It's easy to pretend. You can fake it to make it until the test comes. And Daniel's not a fake. He was free from needing man's approval. He was not looking to find his significance in what other people thought of him. He was not looking to find out his identity in some popular situation. He was already approved of God, and he knew it. And when your heart is centered in God, that's what approves you. That's what approves you. It doesn't matter what someone has said about you. It doesn't matter what someone thinks about you, what they wrote about you, what they said on the Internet about you. It doesn't matter. What does God think about you? Because if you're worried about what others think, you will be a man pleaser. You'll be a man pleaser and you will not be able to withstand the tests that come. You'll simply do what everybody else is doing or what you think everybody thinks you should do or what you think everybody wants you to do. <laughs> Daniel's conspirators, why well, they're like lions too. I mean, it's not just the lions, the ones with four legs and the furry collar. But those who conspire against him, who go to the king and say, listen, we think you ought to sign this law. But we know what's in their heart. We know what they want to do. They're jealous of Daniel. Peter says in his epistle, chapter 5 and verse 8, be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, is prowling like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour and we know from the scripture, verse 2, that the king chose Daniel to be like supervisors. And soon Daniel's excellent spirit proved himself that now the king's thinking, I think I'm going to put Daniel over the whole thing. I think I'm just going to really, I can trust this guy. Listen, when you're a man who follows the heart of God, you're trustworthy. And the world knows it. So they're going to put him in charge, he's thinking. He's got great ability. But let me just say this. Faithfulness to God guarantees opposition. All those who live godly in Christ, 2 Timothy 2.15, shall suffer persecution. All those. You want to live godly in Christ, then know that you're going to be opposed Why is that? Well, we live in a world of, where everybody's a sinner just like ourselves. And sin manifests itself in human nature sometimes as jealousy. People get jealous of God's favor on your life. People were jealous of God's favor on Daniel's life. I mean, the king is actually thinking about, he must have said something to somebody. I'm thinking I'm going to put Daniel over the whole thing. Somebody heard it. Next thing you know, the whispers start. Did you hear this? Did you hear this? Did you hear this? Well, we can't have that. Do we realize that it was jealousy that put Jesus on the cross? It's just a simple, it wasn't like some, it, it was a conspiracy, yes, but it was, a, it was typical human uprisings that come up within the heart. Oh, no wonder Paul, when he writes the Ephesians, says, you need to put away jealousy from you. He's talking to Christian believers. Put away jealousy. Don't be jealous of one another. Because he knows that little seed of jealousy can spring up into a great evil, just like here. Jealousy. People are jealous. They're jealous of your, the favor that God's put on your life. They're jealous of your kids. They're jealous of your car you drive. They're jealous of the house you live in. They can be jealous of jealousy, 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 jealousy. But let's not talk about other people's jealousy. What about our own? Why 
Why was Daniel's promotion a threat to these guys? Because, listen to me, people with godly character are no threat to you. A person with Christ-likeness is not a threat. They want to do what's right. They want to walk in righteousness, in justice, and in peace. They're not a threat. But maybe for these other guys, they were significance seekers. Their significance was attached to their position, and therefore they saw Daniel's promotion as a potential threat to something that they wanted. I want to say to you this morning, now whatever promotion you ever receive in life is just a platform for you to be a testimony to the presence and the workings of God in your life. Promotion is of the Lord, but promotion is for a platform for God to receive glory through your life. It's, promotion is not a platform for you to wield whatever you want to do. That's what we think. We think people that are in a place of power, influence, they just get to do whatever they want to do. No, that's not the way it works. Those who want to do whatever they want to do eventually get cut down. As we see in Saul, as we even see in David's life, or Herod. But when God promotes, it's for placement that you might glorify him and praise him in that new position of your placement. Can you say amen this morning? But let me just say this also. Scheming is a part of human nature. Schemers. Schemers. In the New Testament, the word schemer is like the term busybody. Anybody ever know busybodies? Busybodies. I preached a message one time, birds in the church. Those people who want to say, who is that? Who went there? Who's, you know, the owl, of course. And I had a whole list of birds. <laughs> it worked really good in children's church, you know, anyway. <laughs> Deception's a part of the human condition. I know we don't like to think about it, but as sinners, I mean, we can be deceived and we deceive. Prejudice is part of human nation, human nature. I mean, let's not forget, Daniel is a Jew in a pagan, Gentile, heathenistic and hedonistic culture. Do we not think that maybe there was some anti-Semitism there among the Babylonians, or, excuse me, among the Persians because, you know, Darius is thinking to promote this guy? I think we've all been witnessing a rise in the world of anti-Semitism across the planet. Why is that? Deception, prejudice, Manipulation is part of the human condition because they they get let's let's guys the guys got together let's 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 have the king write it we're not going to find an occasion against it. the guy's just too good the guy's got a clean record but if we can find a law that we know he'll break because he's committed to the law of his god then we got him and they they work a masterful plan hey king sign this decree that nobody can pray to anybody except you Darius. Puts a seal on it. And this is a conspiracy. This is manipulation. All the presidents of the kingdom, the governors, the princes, the count. This isn't just two or three people. This is like the, this is the establishment. They consulted together to establish a royal statute, verse 7 says. But how many know it's impossible to outlaw prayer? People have tried to. People, it's impossible to outlaw church. In China, it's outlawed. The church is strong in China. They meet in forests. They meet in basements, in secret. I'm sure there's a church in North Korea. I'm sure there are Christians. I read an article recently of a pastor in, in Russia. Russia. 
I'm sure there are Christians. In fact, I know they are. I met him in a prayer meeting one time when I was in Ukraine from Iran. You know, God has people everywhere, church. And the New Testament says that God even had saints in Caesar's household. Imagine, you know, in being in Caesar's household, what you heard, what you saw, what you knew. But God has salted the earth everywhere with believers. Daniel 6 verse 10 says that when Daniel knew the law was signed, he did as he always had done. And so these men assembled. They found Daniel praying, making supplication before his God. They came near and they spake before the king. Did you not sign a decree that the man that asked any petition of any God or man within 30 days... Imagine, this is a timed t- trial. Just 30 days. I, wanted to, I don't want to raise your, raise your hand, but if someone told you, you can't pray for 30 days, how many would fold? Well, I can hold out for 30 days. Some of you haven't prayed for 30 days. No trial for you at all. The king answered and said, this thing is true, according to the law of the Meds and Persians, which alters not. Then they answered they and said before the king that Daniel, which is of the children of the captivity of Judah, don't tell me there's no prejudice going on here. This Daniel, this one you're always talking about, this one that you favor, this one that you just, you know, always praising, O king, he regardeth not thee. What? How many of the devil always tries to make things personal? This Daniel, you know this one you put such faith and hope in? He didn't regard you. What? Let me do that again. What? <laughs> like trying to make it personal. Let me tell you, the, the toughest trials in your life will be the ones where the devil makes it personal personal he knows where to get you that's how he worked on job right god i know he he loves you he supports he does all this righteous stuff devil said to god devil said, you, you you make it personal let me make it personal he'll deny you he knows it's the quickest way to get you to react if it's personal he regardeth not thee, nor the decree which you signed, but makes his petition three times a day. What? So what's your lions then? Who are these lions that are coming? The lions den is simply this. It's the situation you're right now facing that would be just a little bit easier if you would just lighten up. I want to say that again. The lion's den is a situation you're facing right now that'll be easier if you'll just lighten up. Stop taking it so seriously. Don't take it so seriously. Will you adjust your commitment to get through a difficulty? Look what Daniel did. As soon as he knew the decree was signed, he went to his house. Now, I want you to pay attention to what Daniel didn't do. He went to his house. What do you think he's going to do in his house? He's going to pray. What he didn't do is go run to Darius. Darius, Darius, how could you do this to me after all I've done for you? Come on, change the law. Tear that thing up. He didn't try to appeal to men. Why, someone like us, as soon as we're in trouble, we can't can't wait to call Sister Cucumber, Brother Tomato. (laughs) Why not cry out to God? He didn't try to save himself. By going to the Darius who had had such favor upon him. He doesn't even alert his 
security guards because he was a president. He had authority. I'm sure he had over security. Security! 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 Somebody may come here tonight. Be on alert. Watch the windows. Watch the doors. I'm going to go pray. Let me know. He didn't alert security. Had Darius delivered Daniel, who would be receiving the praise? And But Darius couldn't deliver Daniel. And the reason? He had signed a law, according to the Medes and the Persians, that it cannot be changed. It can't be altered. We wonder. We wonder sometimes. I've had this conversation with my dad. My dad just didn't understand. And I know he was grieving. He was so upset. I don't want to talk about that. But I was trying to help him understand. I was trying to help anybody understand. You're not being punished. The loss is not a punishment. But God has given us a law, his word, and it cannot be changed. The law that he gave in the garden was a law that it can't be, couldn't be changed. God couldn't just say to Adam, oh, Adam, you ate of the tree. Oh, that's, that's, that's okay. Don't worry about it. God made a law. I can't change the law. Listen. But I can deliver you. God doesn't say there's no other way. He just says, I can't change that, but I can deliver you. I can heal you. I can bring you through. I can cause you to walk through the valley of the shadow of death and fear no evil and know that the rod of God will strengthen you. I can lead you beside waters. I can set a table before you in the presence of enemies and you'll be satisfied. I can anoint your head with oil and your cup runs over and you will dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of your life as goodness and mercy follow you. Can you say amen? Why does there have to be death? That's the question. Who is it uh, Where are you, Dennis? Dennis told me he bought that book, The Denial of Death. Man's struggle. You know what Daniel also could have done? Paul, he could have done this. He could have just cut his losses and said, well, it's sure been a great ride for 80 years. (laughs) Saddle up your donkey (laughs) and head east or west. (laughs) I'm out of here before they find out. I'm gone. Now, how many know you're laughing because we've all done this? (laughs) We think this way. I'm out of here. I'm out of here. Daniel knew the threat, but he trusted God. How important is prayer to you? Daniel was willing to risk his life so he could pray. You know, sometimes a little passive, no, excuse me, sometimes a little resistance to governmental oppression is necessary. I see your law. Got it. Came in the mail. But this is what I'm going to do. There are times, however, Jesus did say, now this, is, this is where, remember in the beginning of this sermon series, I said what? You got to have what? Discernment. Discernment gives you the ability to be alert and aware, and alert and awareness enables you to be able to take action, the proper action. Jesus said, be wise as serpents, harmless as doves. How many of you have ever taken the time to watch a snake? Yeah, okay, Bones has. Good. Rattlesnake. Wow. Tough guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had, I had a pet snake one time as a boy. 
How much time do I have? No time to tell that story. Okay. <laughs> no, I didn't do such a nice thing with that snake. So. <laughs> I'll just tell you the short end of it. I put it in a girl's pocketbook. There, end of story. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> anyway. <laughs> Enough said. Because <laughs> um, my dad had said, you need to free that snake. He's not eating. So I just thought the best way to do it would be it that way. But anyway. <laughs> Um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, snakes. You know, what serpents do? But you know, there may be a snake in your yard right now. I about to guarantee you, you might not know it's there. You know we have snakes on the property here, believe it or not. Who was it? Uh, you've seen the, way, the big one by the wall, by the garden. Yeah, like six feet long, right? Yeah. But here's the thing about a serpent. They move in undetected. They check out the surroundings. They know who's coming, who's going, what's there, what's not. And they are investigating all the while you never see them. Sometimes that's wisdom. Jesus says, be wise as a serpent. Move in undetectable ways. Because that may save your life. But sometimes it's, as Daniel did, push all that undetection aside and Go in and pray like you've always done because Daniel has discerned something. Discernment is the key, church. There are times when the best advance is to keep a low profile. Look at the church in China. They they, they, they keep a low profile. You don't always have to make some public stance. you got to have discernment. Here's why, because that could be just about you. You're trying to draw attention to you. Daniel wasn't trying to draw attention to himself. He just is not going to allow this unjust law to run his life. And somebody tell him how and when he can pray to his God. He went into his house, verse 10 of chapter 6. And his windows being opened his chamber toward Jerusalem, kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed. Let me tell you something. Daniel is a risk taker. I heard something recently. I think it was on one of the business channels or something. We're talking about economics and so forth. And, um, and the question that came up to the, to the commentator was, where are the risk takers today? The risk takers, people who step out on a limb and just take a risk in business. Or, and the answer from the commentary well, it was just so much regulation and this and this is shutting things like that down. But so what? And I'm talking to you now. Step out in faith. No matter what the circumstances are, God wants his people to be people of faith who are continually put themselves out there and say, God, we're trusting you. That never is out of fashion with God. We can make all the excuses in the world today in our modern society, but God still loves a risk taker. Someone who steps out in faith and says, you know what, we're going to do this. Daniel's a risk taker. Those open the windows. He prays. I don't want to be a person who plays it safe as I get into my 60s, 70s. Had to think for a minute. I'm still in my 60s. Do you want to be a person to play? We tend to do that as we get older. We start, well, I don't know if I can do that or not. You know, we're getting close to retirement. And we tend to get a little safe. Safe. That's for somebody here this morning. Stop playing it safe. The life of the church is found in taking steps of faith. The just live by faith, not playing it safe. The world wants you to play it safe. Don't rob, don't speak by. You got too much to lose. The day you think that way is the day you stop being effective, and the devil has already won. 
For Daniel, prayer is not some religious activity that he does at mealtimes. Or just before he goes to bed. Or a quick start to the day. I thought about yesterday. It was during our prayer meeting last night. That's why I logged off. Because God was speaking to me as we are having prayer for the church. And I, I said, so I saw, I'm thinking to myself, what, what would Daniel have prayed? And I found some psalms, Psalm 57, 1. Daniel may have prayed this psalm of David. Have mercy on me, my God. Have mercy on me, for in you I take refuge. I will take refuge in the shadow of your wings until this disaster has passed. I cry out to God most high, to God who vindicates me. He sends from heaven and saves me, rebuking those who hotly pursue me. God sends forth his love and his faithfulness. I am in the midst of lions. I am forced to dwell among ravenous beasts, men whose teeth are spears and arrows, whose tongues are sharp swords. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens, and let your glory be over all the earth. Would Daniel have prayed something like that? I think so. I'm surrounded by beasts. They want my blood. Or Psalm 59, verse 1, deliver me from my enemies, O God. Be my fortress against those who are attacking me. Deliver me from evildoers and save me from those who are after my blood. See how they lie in wait for me, fierce men that conspire against me for no offense of sin of mine. I didn't do anything wrong. What did we say at the beginning of this message? When a man's ways please the Lord, he works on his enemies. As I close, the lion's den was where God would deliver Daniel. The law could not be changed. The law could not deliver him. But God can deliver. Verse 14, then the king, when he heard those words, he was sore displeased with himself. Darius knew. Darius knew when the men came and said, Daniel, you know this guy you're so hot about? This guy you just can't stop being a fan of? Let me tell you, he regarded not thee. And when the king heard it, he says he was displeased with him. Why do you think he was displeased with himself? He realized, I've been duped. I fell into their trap. I fell for it. And so the, he labors till the going down of the sun to deliver him. But they said to him, hey, they don't know way you're going to do this, king. The law of the Medes and Persians, sorry. No decree can be changed. So Daniel is cast into the lion's den. And now the king spoke and said to Daniel, listen to these words in verse 16. Thy God... Thy God, whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. And the stone was brought, laid upon the mouth of the den. The king sealed it with his own signet and with the signet of his lords that the purpose might not be changed concerning Daniel. Yeah, the king knew his own ego had got the best of him, caused the situation. He regrets being manipulated by others. How do you know God will have the last word? He will make known the foolishness of this world. <laughs> First Corinthians 3 says the wisdom of the world, it's foolishness to God. And we are, see we are living that today, church. We are seeing PhDs, doctors and professors, experts creating foolishness. And it's backfiring, it's not working. 1 Corinthians 3.19 says, he catches the wise in their craftiness. You just have to wait. You and I just have to trust. We have the simple job. Our job is simple. Just trust God. When the situation presents itself, that's not your lion's den. The lion's den is the choice you make when the situation presents itself. Here's another king, like Nebuchadnezzar investigating the power of God, 
Why is he? Your God will deliver you, Daniel. He's investigating. Boy, I tell you what, God wants the church to be in a place where people, where people are so faithful, trusting God so much with their lives that the world's like, we've got to investigate this. We've got to investigate. Why is he still standing? Why is she still strong? Why are they still believing? Why, why, why? Investigating your faithfulness. Why, why is he doing that? Because Daniel's a faithful servant. If we want the world to pick, turn their head, what? What? Then you be one. You be one with the courage to stand. All night long, Darius can't sleep, worrying, and tossing, and turning. Early in the morning, he goes to investigate. People are looking every day to see if the God that you said is for you is truly with you. They're checking you out. Is this God that you said you believe in, is he really for you? They're looking at your commitment. They're looking at the things that you say that you believe in. Is it true? Is it real? Does it work? They're looking to see how you handle the threats. They're looking to see if you, how you handle the lies. They want to know, do you really find your significance in Christ? Or do you find your significance in all this political language that we've taught you how to speak? As Babylonians. Is that your security? Some new way of talking? Or is your identity in Christ? Here's what Daniel says. My God! He shouts up to Darius. My God sent his angel. And he shut the mouths of the lions. They have not hurt me. Because I was found innocent. In his sight. Nor have I done any wrong to you, O king. And the king was overjoyed, gave orders to pull Daniel out of the den, and no wound was found on him. Now, do you know what some PhDs have said about this verse? Well, those lions probably weren't very hungry. That's what they say. This is the foolishness of the world speaking. I guess they weren't hungry. It's amazing what people will believe instead of what's here. <clears throat> if you keep reading the story, though, Darius says, and this is why this is no children's story. Darius says, <clears throat> go get those conspirators. Go get those men who duped me. Go get those guys who, who lied to me and manipulated me. You go get them and their families, their children, and their wives. Go get them now. And the scripture says before their bodies even touched the floor of the den, the lions pounced on them, broke their bones, and ate them up. No bedtime story for kids. They got hungry awful quick, Mr. Ph.D. They got very hungry awful fast. And let me just close that's my second closing. And I'll stand to your feet. Then you know I'm almost done. Go ahead and stand to your feet. <laughs> Daniel experienced the angel of the Lord. I don't know. You know, he got in the, if he got there and, and those lions were just kind of walking around. And they couldn't do anything. An angel of the Lord. You know, there's so many times we're looking for human aid. Jesus, before he was crucified, he's in the garden. He says, Peter, James, and John, come on. Come with me. I want you guys to watch with me and pray with me. And the scripture says they just started yawning and sleeping and couldn't stay with Jesus while he's praying. And the scripture says, an angel of the Lord came. Listen, there will be times when nobody will stand with you. There will be times when you will stand completely alone. Times when you have to carry a cross. 
that only you can carry, that no one can pick up for you. What do you want? Human help? Or do you want the angel of the Lord to come and strengthen you? Because when he strengthens you, then suddenly your burden becomes light and your yoke becomes easy. And you can be faithful to do what God called you to do in obedience to him, just as Daniel did. Conspirators, significant seekers, schemers, all end up in the lion's den. Listen to this verse. Whoever is pregnant with evil, Psalm 714, whoever is pregnant with evil conceives trouble and gives birth to disillusionment. Whoever digs a hole and scoops it out falls into the pit that he made for others. He falls into the very pit that he made for somebody else. And so that's what happens. They brought the families of those conspirators. And those lions had breakfast, lunch, dinner, leftovers. <laughs> I could make a joke here. This would be terrible then. <laughs> I just said if they came by chariot, it would be Meals on Wheels. <laughs> just, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I just had to do it. God forgive me. I know that's not what I said. <laughs> that's terrible. <laughs> oh. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word today. This is no laughing matter to be faithful, to be courageous, to take chances, to have discernment. Make us soberly minded in this day, Lord, alert, aware, with discerning eyes and ears, discerning hearts, to know what to do, how to do it. I thank you, Father, that you are raising up a generation where people are going to be turning their heads and are going to want to do some investigating about the strange phenomenon of faith, strange phenomenon of people who won't bend, bow, or burn, a strange phenomenon of people who trust no matter what, who believe no matter what you do to them, no matter what threat you put before them, they trust you. We thank you, God, for the lion's den. And we thank you, God, that you have shut the mouths of the lions. You've shut the mouth of our accuser, Lucifer, Satan, who accuses us day and night. You shut his mouth on the cross and said, my people are blameless because of the blood of Christ. You shut his mouth. Whatever Satan has whispered in your ear to accuse you of, to bring shame upon you, Jesus has said, enough. He has silenced the lion's mouth. Pay no more attention to the liar, the destroyer of this day. But trust God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.